In this video, we will cover how to upsert data using the data loader. So, the first step is to install data loader in your desktop machine. Go to setup and type in data loader and download the data loader file as per your operating system either for Windows or Mac OS. The key consideration for the installation of data loader is there should be a Java runtime environment of version 11 or later. Then the respective considerations for Windows or Mac can be found in the developer docs by typing in considerations for installing data loader and these are the respective system requirements for Windows or Mac OS. After you set up the Java runtime environment and installed data loader, open the application. The theme can be changed either to the dark or light mode from the settings which we'll cover later. These are the operations supported by data loader, insertion, update, and upsert, which is a combination of insert and update, deletion of data, export and export all. If you want to do an export operation or export data from your objects, hard delete is relevant only when bulk API is enabled. So, we'll be doing an upsert operation. Click on Upsert. The first step is to connect your data loader application to your Salesforce org. So, here you can select production or sandbox depending on where you want to do the upload. In my case, it will be in my dev org, so the environment will be production. For auth or password authentication, we will be using auth to authenticate the login, also the most commonly used method. Click on login and enter your credentials. On the next prompt click on allow the access, it takes a few seconds and the login was successful. Click on next. Here we are going to do an upsert on the lead object. Choose the source CSV file. So, I've already prepared a CSV file in the background called lead extract. Let me open that and show it to you. This is the file with which we will be doing an upsert. As you are aware upsert is a combination of insert and update. So, I exported the lead data leads which were not converted. And we will be doing a dummy update on the existing leads by changing the status of these open leads to working contacted. Next, I'll copy working contacted here and just copy it to the remaining rows. Also, I have entered three rows of new leads against which there is no ID. You can see within the export. The ID column was also exported and these three records do not have an ID associated so these will be the fresh insertions into the lead object. Now, let's go ahead and save this as a CSV file, as only CSV format is supported. And make sure that your header names are as close or seen as the object API name, so that the field mapping step is done seamlessly, which we'll see in just a moment. Now, after you save the file, Click on Browse and I'll find my file Lead Extract 2, select it and click on Next. If you don't see a particular object that you want to find, click on Load All Salesforce Objects. Some of the objects remain hidden, however, they can be shown by clicking on Show All Salesforce Objects. We'll go ahead and continue with Leads. Click on Next. In the next step, there is a prompt that says that your file contains 71 records. Click on OK. The next step is choosing your field to use mapping. In order to match on lead, use either the ID field or an external ID, which is also a unique field to match the lead records in our file, so we will go ahead and use the ID for our update. Now, choose your related objects. Our record type ID is already mapped. And, we will use the ID field to map the record type. Individual and DNB company are not relevant for this use case. So, we will skip this and click on Next. The next step is mapping the CSV headers in your file to Salesforce fields. Since I took an export and the names are similar, click on Create or Edit a Map and click on Auto Match Fields to Columns. If your names are as close or similar to the API names, it's going to do 100% match. Otherwise, let's say if the name is incorrect, or let's say the mapping was not found in this operation, because of a different name in the CSV file that Salesforce was not able to detect, you can copy the respective fields. So, I'm going to copy phone and just drag and drop it here. It is always advised to save the mapping, because in the last step, if there is any error, you don't need to do this step again. 
and, for any future uploads, this mapping will also save you time to do the mapping at this step again. I will save this, it gets saved as a .sdl file. Click on OK. Now, all my fields are mapped. Give it a good look to make sure the relevant fields are mapped to the right Excel headers and click on Next. The next step is to click on Finish. Please note, when the operation runs, the result will either be a success or there could be an error or a partial success or a partial error. Select the directory where the success and error files will get saved. We will select the desktop and click on Finish. Here we can see a prompt pop-up stating that you've chosen to add new records or update existing records. This is because we were doing an upsert and this action cannot be undone. Click on Yes to proceed. It will take a few seconds depending on the count of records. In this case you can see that the operation is complete with all 71 upserts done successfully and there were no errors. You can click on View Success, these are all the success records. And at the end, the three records Jack Hanna, Samantha Doolittle, and Jane Saxon which were fresh inserts, you can see that a record ID was generated. Now, if I were to open up the success file which got saved on the desktop. This is the success file we can copy, the ID and just have a look in Salesforce that the status was updated to contacted working. So, I copied the ID and pasted it in the URL, it will take me to the lead record. And if I go to my status, you can see that the lead status was updated to working contacted and let's look at the new leads as well. Search for Samantha and this is the new lead which was inserted. Going back, the success file has 71 records that can be used or kept for auditing purpose later, and the error file in this case would be empty. Because, all the successful inserts are done. Let's look at a sample error file which had errors in a previous transaction. Let's open it in Excel. At the end of this error file, there is a column that gets generated with the relevant error. So, here you can see, there is a custom field Oracle ID, which is required and the value for that field has not been specified. So, that's the error. The other error says that there is a duplicate external ID. So, one of the fields, which is your Oracle ID, was marked as an external ID and you cannot have duplicate values in an external ID field. And, that is the reason why these two records failed to upload. So, this is how you can triage the error file, change the values as per the errors and then re-upload this error file. So, the data operation for these remaining records takes place. This is how you can use data loader and this was an example of sample upsert. Similarly, you can do an export or export all does the export of all data in the org. Now, let's have a quick look at the key settings of the data loader. Scroll to the top section and access settings. Let's look at the key settings. The first is the batch size. Records are processed that is inserted, updated, deleted or upserted in increments of this size. The maximum is 200 records, the recommended value is between 50 to 100. So, when you're using the SOAP API, which is by default, and the maximum value can be increased to 10,000 records if you're using the bulk API, which is enabled with this checkbox. Next is Insert Null Values. This option is used to insert blank map values as null values during data operations. If you leave a field blank that previously had a value, and you're doing an update operation, this option will overwrite existing data with null values. The next one is use bulk API, this feature is used to upload large amounts of data asynchronously. It is faster than SOAP API which is used by default if this is not checked, and the batch size can be increased to 10,000 as mentioned earlier. The next handy setting is the European date format, which is DDMMY, Y, 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 and then subsequently hours, minutes and seconds. By default, the format used is MMDDYYYY. You can use the European date format by checking this box. Thank you for watching.